Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, Lord, we've come. We've come with a heart of gratitude to worship you, to praise you, to exalt your name. Your name, Lord, is above all other names. When we call upon your name, Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Jeremiah 33 3 says, Call upon me and I shall answer and I shall show, give you great and mighty things. This morning, Lord, I pray as we've come, Lord, we've come, Lord, to sit at your feet and drink of what you have in your hands this morning. This morning, Lord, I pray you permeate the atmosphere, Lord, with your presence, with your love, your love, Lord, in every heart this morning. Stir our hearts up this morning, Lord. Stir our hearts up, Lord, that we may receive your fresh fire, a fresh anointing this morning as we sing and praise and worship you that you get the glory in all that we do this morning especially this morning we bring our praise and worship team Lord we plead your precious blood over them Lord we pray as they lead us into the holy of holies you will touch their mighty God touch their hands touch their lips anoint them this morning as they lead us into deep deep worship as we worship and give are all this morning. This morning we bring the shepherds of our church this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would cover them as you lead and direct their steps this morning. As Pastor Noel brings forth the word, I pray, Lord, that this word will be fresh manner to our souls this morning. May we receive it this morning so something will shift in our lives. May we not leave the same this morning. This morning, Lord, as we come and pray Praise you in unity, Lord. Your word said, where there's unity, you command a blessing. And this morning, Lord, we pray for your blessings to come down upon each and every person seated here this morning. We thank you, Lord, that your presence will will fill each and every heart this morning. I pray, Lord, we, we, we thank you and we glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this house. Come on, let's worship him.
everybody my name is Noel and this is Portia and we are the pastors here at the family church in Springfield Park Durban South Africa we thank you for watching this program today and may you be blessed hi everyone thank you for joining us may you be encouraged and inspired as you watch the message today what a shallow place it will be if our praise is only dependent on what God does for us what a shallow relationship that will be when we only worship God for all that He does for us and we don't worship Him for who He is. What a shallow relationship that will be when all we praise Him for is because of the memory of the blessings He's given us. What a shallow relationship that will be. And I urge you today as a body of Christ to come out from the place of where we are seeking God only for what we can get but we start to transition to the next level to praise Him and worship Him and honor Him and seek Him for His purpose to unfold in our life and to worship Him just for who He is can somebody say amen I want you to say help is always there say it again help is always there I want you today to read with me as we read from the book of Genesis chapter 2 and we're going to read from verse number 4 and there's quite a bit of reading today but streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground and then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and of evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden and from there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Fishon. It, it winds through the entire land of Havila where there is gold. The gold that land is gold. The gold of that land is good, aromatic resin and onyx are also there. Verse number 13. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It winds through the entire land of Cush. Verse number 14. The name of the third river is the Tigris and it runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Verse number 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Can somebody say amen? amen? And now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. And so the man gave names to all the livestock 
the birds in the sky and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. And so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. And then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he had brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. And that is why the Bible says in verse number 24, a man leaves his father and his mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and the Bible says they felt no shame. Today I talk to you about the subject on that I've called help is always there. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now when you look up on the screens I want to just give you and hopefully we can get there but if not then don't let that be a distraction. If it's going to come on and off Darren then just leave it off and I will talk to the people. And if you need these notes, just talk to us and we can get that through. But more importantly, this needs to be fixed. We're actually talking about it this morning upstairs, how important technology is. But, uh, and exactly what we're talking happened. How dependent we become on technology and does technology overrule the way we do church? Uh, he sent me a clip last night of a church out in one of the countries in the world where they were busy rehearsing for uh, one of the services, and they put uh, runners on the ceiling. And they were rehearsing in this, and men were coming on those runners, hanging from there, banging the drums. They were getting ready for some service. And I mentioned to Darren, we must be careful that there is a line between entertainment and worship. Don't ever get caught up in entertainment in any church. And as a church here at the family church, we are very wary of that. All the leaders are very wary of that because we cannot get into entertaining you. The day we get into entertaining you, you are going to be in big trouble and me as a shepherd is going to be in even more trouble. Amen. We have to understand the importance of worshipping God and honoring Him and not switching over to gain crowds through entertainment for God does not want all of that. You can have the numbers. Numbers mean nothing until your heart is rent and is submitted to God. And so I want to say today, how do we leave and how do we cleave? You know, this month is Women's Month. And every one of us are celebrating women, which I thought was such a powerful thing. You know, celebrating women. They give women the whole month, but they don't give men the whole month. When is that going to happen? And then they have Mother's Day one day. And then they have Father's Day one day. And then last month in June... The whole month was given to you know what. And now you have to understand as a child of God what is happening in this world. How the enemy is blinding our spiritual eye. And if your spiritual eye is not opened, my dear brother and sister, then I'm afraid you are going to be wasting time and may even be outside the will of God. Why do I say wasting time? I say that because when our eyes are blind, we are losing ground. We are losing ground. When we are in the Spirit, we are in the Spirit and we are at a level where God wants us. We are flowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. I said to the praise and worship team this morning when we're praying upstairs, there are two types of people that come to church. What's the first type? Those that are in the, and what's the second type? Yeah, don't be frightened. Those, say it loud, why are you scared? Don't be scared. Those that are in the flesh. flesh. Now, whatever percentage that is in the church is nobody's business. 
But the fact is, you can be in the house of God and you can be in the spirit and you can be flowing with what God is doing or you can be in the flesh, you can be in the house of God, you come in wanting, you worshipping, still wanting, you go out still wanting, not receiving anything. Our job every day, every Sunday when we come to the house of God is to grow spiritually like I explained why there is a gym and people go to the gym to get physically fit. We have to get spiritually fit so that we can do everything that God has for us on the outside. Now, how do we leave and cleave? This is for all those mothers who are so close to their sons and maybe fathers that are so close to their daughters. Amen? Let me help you today. How do we leave and cleave? Three ways. Physically, couples need their own space. Secondly, emotionally, couples need to rely on each other for support. And thirdly, financially, because couples need to be financially independent. The Bible calls the wife a helper. God made her with that role and with that purpose in mind. Imagine how powerful it is that God says after he made Bimal and he put him in the garden, he didn't leave you as the big shot. He said, Bimal, I know that you are going to be in the Garden of Eden and I'm giving you instructions. And then when you read the word, he says, yes, Adam. But he looked around after he made everything, but there was no suitable helper for him. No suitable helper. And that's when God says, I've got to make a helper suitable for him. That is why Jessica is married to him because your boat became one when you said, I do, I do. Why? Because she was the one that was suitable for you. And as time goes on and you get, and the first five years is honeymoon and everything is hunky-dory and you're enjoying life and then the pressures come, the tests come and then we have to see whether, how, what, was the reason we got married? What was the reason we got married? Now things are changing. And now all these temptations are coming. And all the attacks are coming. And things are going out of kilt. God put a helper in your life because in you, you got an ego. Like me, same. Men have egos. And that's why men are moved How? How are women moved? How are you operate emotionally? Right? And men are moved by ego. Egotistical. In the natural. In the natural. And God knew right there he has to fix that up. Right in the garden. Before anything ever happened after that. I've got to fix this up. He says I'm going to make a helper for Bimal. Otherwise his head is going to be so big. He's going to think he's the manna. Amen? Ladies said... And all the ladies said, and one more time, and all the ladies said, and all the brothers said, uh -uh, one more time, all the brothers said. Now, the enemy wants Bimal to fight Jessica and wants Jessica to fight Bimal. But the Bible is explicit and it gives direct guidelines on the order of how the family unit needs to be. And we are not jostling for position because each one has a role to play. I can see you feeling a bit uh, uh, left out without Jessica. You could take your seat. Next service, I'll call you when she's here. The Bible says it is not good for Bimal to be alone. I'm going to make him a helper suitable for him. What exactly is a help me? The King James Version calls it a help meet. What's a help meet? It is not a subservient role. It is not, Marlon, when you get married one day and your wife is there, you can say, hey, barefoot, pregnant and in the kitchen. No, sir. Because she's got 
a role to play in your life. You know, when we're growing up and we have all these uncles and aunts around us, some of our uncles teach us some bad habits because they're from the, not the old school, they're from the outdated school because they never have the revelation of the word, really. That's the fact of the matter. A helpmate is one when one needs help, we need someone to do what we cannot do. In other words, they have more expertise and skill in that area. Imagine how God sorted out my pride and my ego. And he says, no, I'm going to make you a helper suitable for you. On the areas where I am weak, Portia is strong. On the areas where Portia is weak, I am strong. So in other words, we complement each other. Is there any competition in our marriage? No. There should not be competition because everyone needs to have their place. Everybody needs to have their place. And especially now, Ben, with the way the world is going and the economy and how people are just progressing, you are seeing how ladies are taking lead roles in companies, etc., etc. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with I'm working in the company, you my manager, and I'm submitting to you. There's nothing wrong with that. Can Val say amen? Say louder, Val. Amen. amen. Because every one of you will be tested in your own personal role as a husband and as a wife. You cannot go if I'm working in a company and I'm saying, no, hey, she's a few, I can't take instructions from her. No, you cannot do that. That's wrong. You have to be secure in who you are. I'm talking about a husband and a wife role in the home and having the divine order and the protection. Now the challenge comes when the lady may have the role in the work and brings that authoritative spirit that comes to give you and put illegal authority and exercise illegal authority in the home. And that's where doors are open. Doesn't matter she's got a manager position, you have got a supervisor position, or you're not even in any management position. It does not matter. When she comes back home, you're the head of the home. She's the helpmeet. Is that okay? Now, the ladies got very quiet, Morgan, and let me help them. Because when you read the word, the Bible very explicitly says we must respect each other. Who read that in the Bible? I'll read it for you. Just in case some of you didn't or passed that book, I will read it for you in a few moments. Say, help me. When God gave Adam a help me, God gave him a helper. A best friend, he gave him a wife, he gave him a lover, a sister, an associate, an advisor, a confidant, a coach, a teacher, a cheerleader, a protector, a motivator, a teammate, a peacekeeper, a nurturer, and so on and so on and so on. Oh no love, that lady is only my confidant. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Listen to me today. Brothers, hear my heart. You want to protect your marriage, cut the females out from circles in your life where they should not be. Your wife has authority in that area. God has given and made her the helper in your life. The enemy wants to break marriage. Remember the day you set your wedding date. Is the day the enemy has put his best team forward to break up that marriage. Because it's a divine union where two become one flesh. All the things Adam needed to survive, Bimal. All the things you needed to survive and to go further in your purpose were wrapped up in Jessica, in your helpmeet. This is why the Bible says, leave and cleave. Because everything a husband needs is in his wife. Not his mother. Not his female best friend. Not his daughter. Not his sister or any other woman. Very quiet this church is today. Once you're married, you leave and cleave. 
I'm not saying disrespect your parents now. That's not what I'm saying. The Bible is clear. Honor your mother and father. Have you got that thing ready? Won't work. That's okay. You know which one? That video. Won't work, eh? No, if it doesn't, don't stress. The Bible says in Proverbs 18.22, he who finds a wife, the pastor said it yesterday, remember? To that young man. He says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Then they change it. To, that boy says, he found a great thing. <laughs> There's a special blessing when we are married. By the way, I am abdicating and I'm promoting and Portia and I as pastors of this church that people get married young. We're saying it out. If you want to argue with me, come and argue. I'll love you anyway. It's because the spirit of independence has come in and there are so many boys and girls, young men and young women not married. And let me tell you what's happening. Listen, there's a gift to be single. There's many women in the Bible that were single and men. That's a gift. But the Bible gives us a what? A role and it gives us an instruction to go and procreate, subdue the earth, okay? Multiply the earth. So that, so that his spirit in us is multiplied in the earth. If we're not getting married and having children, where's his spirit moving? Guess what spirit is getting stronger? What spirit is getting stronger? Think about what I'm saying. Think carefully about what I'm saying. Why do you think they want to cut down children in some countries? They don't want child, childbirth. They give you. They'll give you X amount of money. You only have one child. There's evil agendas behind all of that. Total evil agendas. Now, there's a special blessing when you are married. And although it gets hard at times, the Bible says you are favored by the Lord. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, and I want to go there just to help you in what I was explaining earlier on. Ephesians chapter 5, and I want to read from verse number 25. Husbands, love your wife. But just before that, verse number, yeah, verse number 22, the Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. And I see many friends, many people I know, even out in the secular world and in the corporate industry, when I used to be there, and this used to be a common talk, and they will have, we'll have board meetings and discussions and stuff and all of that, and then someone will say, hey, don't you know what the Bible says? Wives, submit to your husbands. And the word submission is more highlighted than anything else. But before that, in verse 21, the Bible says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So as a husband, I cannot say, Portia, you better submit to me if I'm not submitted to her. Because the Bible says we must be submitted one to another. Let's be clear now. Woo, some of you are very quiet. The husband is the head. The wife is the helpmeet. There is a mutual respect that you have because if you have God's love in you, you won't demean her, push her down, and don't give her opportunity for her to rise and do whatever God's placed in her heart. Is that clear? Because you will be secure in who you are in God. So wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is the savior. And now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands. And here's where the challenge comes. For many, many, many men. Is as much as we will agree with the first part of Ephesians and we say submit. Wives submit, 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 submit because we have problems with our ego. But if we do what the Bible says in verse 25, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. We won't have a problem with the submission. Portia and I were tested in that many times in our years of marriage. I had pride, I hope it's almost dealt with, you know. 
I'm not saying I'm fully clear of pride. There may be some lingering things there. I can't bluff you and say I've got no pride. There might be some streaks which we have to deal with and get rid of. Otherwise, those streaks will become bigger and it will take you out together with your marriage. Understand what pastor is saying today. So our job as husbands is to love our wives just as Christ loved the church. So the question then is asked, how did Christ love the church? He loved the church unconditionally. That's how we love the church. Unconditional. So in other words, I must love this girl whether she irritates me or not. Whether I came home and she never make the trotters and beans. You understand? I must still love her whether she said something that irritated me. My job is to still love her. Love, true love is in God. That is why it's young people, right? All the young people. You don't go into marriage looking for love because you will never find it. You go into marriage taking love. And who is love? The Bible says God is love. So when you have God first, you become secure in who you are. And you take that into the marriage because you know you're going into a marriage where the person has also got feet of clay. They're going to make mistakes just like our egotistical nature makes so much mistakes and we can't even say sorry. How should a man love his wife? Unconditionally, sacrificially, we must give up ourselves for her. Godly characteristics. Godly characteristics. Or characteristics of a godly woman. That's what I should have written. I knew my wife didn't check my work. I didn't give it to her on time. Characteristics of a godly woman. Number one, they must be a believer. They must believe. They must be sold out to the Lord. Not half and half. Not one foot here and the other foot in the church. It don't work. God is a jealous God. They must not be malicious. They must be temperate. They must be trustworthy. They must adorn themselves appropriately. They must submit to their husband. They must be gentle, known for her good deeds, discerning and wise, hospitable, trains her children in truth, loves others, teaches of the word, serves in the church and community, manages their home, virtuous and held in high esteem, and also a hard worker. And all the men said, Ah, if you think that was heavy for the ladies, us guys have got an even crazier role. But I'm not going to tell you that today. I'll tell you when the time is right. A woman's responsibility to society, according to Titus 2. Likewise, all the older women is to be reverent in the way they live. Not to be slanderous or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. And then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands. Okay, there's a role here now. So the older women have got a role to play for the younger women. And so the Bible says, that so that they can teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children. Verse number five, to be self-controlled and pure. To be busy at home, not to be busy everywhere else and in every other person's home. To be kind and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. They must be the example, they must show the way. All the women in the church, in the community have a role to set examples for the younger girls. Okay, You remember growing up many times when I used to mess up on the road. I used to have three or four. Thank God my father's not here. I'll collect in the other houses before I come home and then I collect there. That's how the community grew up. But now with all of this, everyone wants equality. 
Feminism has come in, which I must talk to you all about. Uh, they want equality. Then you can't go and hit the child, spare the rod, spoil the child. The Bible says you can't. Corporal punishment. They want to put you in jail. All of that is happening. But I remembered when I collected one or two, it put me in place. Now, I'm not saying physical abuse. Because you don't ever punish out of anger. You'd never. You do it out of love. The Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. So, so, so discipline must be done out of love. And you must be quick to go and hug and build. You understand? As a, as a parent. Now, you tell them. Firstly, the younger ladies. Then you show them how to do it. Then you let them do it and you correct if necessary. And thereafter, you let them carry on. Now, I know that time is gone. But there was a lady in the Bible called Hannah who was such a powerful woman. And that's why I had that video and I wanted to play it for you. Ladies, if you only know the power that you carry... As an intercessor. I'm not saying intercession is not for men. No. But you have a special gift of birthing. Men don't understand birthing. Women understand birthing. And when you're in the spirit and when you're praying. And when that thing is in the birth canal. And you want to pray and you're going to push that thing through. You understand the pain. Many people think prayer is easy. Prayer is never easy. It's hard work. I'll not lie and tell you prayer is easy. Prayer is hard work. Go and try it and you'll see. Not just our Father who art in heaven and that's all and go home. Bless my food and me no more. Uh -uh. I'm talking about sincere talking to God. Where your heart is just open before Him. Father, I come before you as I am. Prostrate before the floor. And you cry out to the Father. You see, the enemy knows the power of prayer. And that is why he will do everything in his power to keep you away from prayer. Hannah was accused of being drunk early in the morning. Because the men that accused her didn't understand spiritual things. She was speaking and praying in the spirit. They accused her of being drunk. And she was crying and travailing to that degree because she did not get a child. And the other lady, her sister had a child. And the other wife had the child. And both were fighting in their own way. And she wanted the child. She was without child. And she cried to the Lord. And God eventually heard her prayer. And who came forth? Samuel came forth. And when you look at the line of Samuel, you see all that happened. If Hannah had not prayed, Samuel and everything after that would not have happened. You hold the power as a mother to pray. I know I can be here today standing because I know and I hear my mother pray at home. I hear her. I'm saying to you mothers today, don't give up praying for your children, for your marriage, for your community, for your church. God hears your prayers. And all the men that are here today, we must understand and acknowledge that and don't fight it. Let's not make the home a place where it's misery and the atmosphere is not good. We, as the heads of the home, control the atmosphere. Sometimes the kids know. Portia and I, when we have a little disagreement, all of that, then after a while, I have to go, you know, eat humble pie. You know, you all got humble pie in the fridge? You all got some humble pie in the fridge? You all don't have humble pie in the fridge. Order some for them. Put it in the fridge in a safe place where nobody can eat, take it. Because as husbands, we need that humble pie sometimes. I go take a piece, and then I come back. And then I start to play, and I start to there, and there, and I want to make, have a fun with everybody. But I'm seeing she's not fully, you know, <laughs> jivering. So I say, but why are you not jivering? It's because I never be sincere. I ate the humble pie, but I never come and spend time first and say, okay. You see, guys, we get irritated to talk for long. 
because men are moved, they operate on FM, men are operating on AM. <laughs> AM is very little news. Ladies, FM, one way. <laughs> but that's the gifting. Because they want to hear, they look at the detail, we only look at the big picture. But we have to come together in synergy as a couple. Bring that together and be used for the power and for the advancement of God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Marriage is hard work. It's not easy. It's hard work. But it's highly rewarding when you are united. Now Thank you for watching today's message. Remember to follow us on our social media platforms, which is Facebook, Instagram, as well as this YouTube channel. Well, we we're so glad that you were able to follow us today and watch today's program. We are hoping that you were encouraged, you were strengthened and edified and ready to do all that God is going to do through you. Portia and I are the pastors here at the Family Church in Springfield Park, Durban, South Africa. If you are ever in our country or in our province, be sure to come and visit us. We have two services on a Sunday, 8 a.m. and of course 10 a.m. We would be glad to have you visit and worship with us. God bless you. Until the next time. Bye-bye.